And today I'm gonna walk you through how to build your first conjugate program so you can maximize how great the system is and get results, so let's get right into it. Obviously, you are already aware, you have seven days a week. Your training is gonna be organized as two upper body days and two lower body days. Now, I've numbered these one through seven. You can make them any days that you want. In a typical west side week, the first training day is actually gonna be Sunday. So you'll have a light upper body day, a heavy lower body day, a heavy upper body day, and a light lower body day. And you can organize these however you choose. You can start your week on Monday, you can start it on Sunday, you can start it on Wednesday if you really wanna get crazy. The important thing is to keep the spacing of the workouts the same. So this is upper body light, and I'll explain that in a second. Lower body heavy, upper body heavy, lower body light. Now, when it comes to the training days every week, light and heavy. Heavy makes sense. That's where you're going to try and get as strong as you possibly can. Light days are about force production and extra work, especially in the beginning. If this is your first time venturing into a conjugate program, you're going to hear a lot about accommodating resistance and bar speed and certain waves that you should be running, especially on your lighter training days. Don't worry about that so much in the beginning. Worry about as much force production as you can generate while maintaining your form and position and worry about getting good quality work in. So let's start going through these days. Your first day of the week is going to be your light upper body day or your dynamic effort upper body day. So we'll go dynamic effort upper to use the traditional west side lingo. But as you go through this, and this might be a little bit hard for you to see, but I will include in the link uh, or I'll put a link in the description on the video of a write-up of this. You can take it as like a Google Sheet and fill it in for yourself. But as you are doing this, your, your first lift on your light upper body day is going to be some type of press. Typically, if you're interested in conjugate and west side, you're probably powerlifting, so you're bench pressing. But there's no reason you couldn't do an overhead if that makes more sense for your goals. And your options here are either five sets of five or eight sets of three. If you're doing eight sets of three, you should be adding accommodating resistance. You can potentially add that on the five by five as well. It will depend on how new you are to this. Again, don't sweat this too much at the beginning. Get good quality work in and make sure you're moving the bar very well. It should be powerful repetitions all the way through. Next, I'm actually going to make these a different color for you. Let's go purple. So after your main movement of that day, you're going to go for four to six sets of, let's say, six to eight reps of a tricep dominant movement. This will be hard, heavy work. And your options here are super varied. You could do dips if you wanted, especially weighted dips. You could do a close grip bench press. You could do a, a different bench press variation against bands, especially depending on what your first lift was. You could do a Spoto press, a JM press. The options are very broad. A board press. I'm going to stop giving you options, but you got a lot. Just don't make it a push down or something like that. That's not cool. It should be a compound movement that's very tricep dominant. From there, we are going for three to five sets of eight to ten reps for the next two exercises. And those are going to be a horizontal row and a vertical pull. So a horizontal row, something like a barbell row, a dumbbell row, chest supported row, something where you're pulling weight in horizontally. Next is a vertical pull. I always do pull-ups. Um, that's because I really like them and it makes me feel cool to do them as a big dude. But any type of vertical pulling is cool. Any type of pull down or pull up. From there, we're going three to four sets for the next, or for the rest of our exercises, the next three exercises, and we will there be going somewhere between 10 to 12 or 12 to 15 reps. Now your first exercise is going to be something shoulder or pec isolation. A lot of people, so that's S&P, shoulder or pec. A lot of people don't think that's super cool, but it is. Uh, I think you're, well, side raises or front raises will make you look cool. Front raises especially will be good for your pressing. Any type of pec fly also fits in here. If your pecs are a weakness for you, that's where you would add them. 
Next, you're going to have an arm isolation. Your triceps are going to be getting lots of work, but if you think they're a weak point for you, do triceps. That's where you could do a push down, a rolling dumbbell extension, a skull crusher, that type of movement. You could also do anything bicep that you like, but pick one of them. And last, you're going to do rear delts. And that'll obviously be your lightest exercise of the week. So that is your first training day. This is a lot. If you are just starting a program like this, if you've never done volume like this, start on the lower end of everything. So you've got four to six sets, do four. Three to five, do three. Slowly build up the amount of work as you accommodate to the amount of volume this is gonna be, because it's, it's not nothing. Next, you will go to your heavy, or what West Side would call, max effort lower body day. So this is where you get to pick an exercise and go hard. You're gonna go for a three to five rep max. And then you're gonna do a drop, or not a drop set, excuse me. It's not gonna be a drop set, you're gonna rest completely. So once you've hit a legitimate, everything you can do for three to five reps, you're gonna take 25% off and rep out. And you're gonna set a rep record. So you're gonna walk away from that day with, okay, my three rep max on this box squat, or my three rep max on my deficit deadlift, or my good morning, whatever. You're gonna have your three to four, or three to five rep max. You're also gonna have a rep record at a particular weight. Now from there, we're going four to six of six to eight reps. Oh, I should have written, written this in purple. I'm gonna write this in purple, but we're gonna go four to six sets of six to eight reps of something hard and posterior chain. Actually, I'll make this blue. Lower body accessories are gonna be blue. So four to six sets times six to eight reps of a hard posterior chain movement. So I'm a big fan of things like a good morning variation. If you didn't do that as your main work, I like stiff leg deadlifts. You could do there's a lot of cool things you can do. I'll let you figure it out. But something hard that hammers your glutes, hamstrings, lower back, that type of area. Next, three to five sets of eight to 12 reps for our next two exercises. So here, you're gonna choose something unilateral. That means one leg at a time. That will naturally, unless you pick something crazy, make it fairly quad focused, which is what you should do. Lunges are great, Bulgarian split squats are great. Step-ups are great. Use your imagination. One leg working at a time with some quad focus. Your last exercise is going to be another three to five reps, or sorry, three to five sets of eight to 12 reps. And this will be a moderate posterior chain exercise. If you're pretty strong, something like a glute ham race might be great for three to five sets of eight to 12 reps. If that is not your jam yet, you might be doing a band leg curl. Depends how strong you are, what you're comfortable with, but it should be a moderately stressful movement for you. And then last, you're gonna have abs. Do not make these an afterthought. Train your abs hard. Most so you can see all of this. Train your abs hard, please. Heavy, like standing crunches, ab wheel are great. Weighted ab wheels are great. There's a lot of choices here, but, but really work your abs like you mean it. Now, these are our first two training days of the week. That gets us through our light upper body and our heavy lower body. Now, when we move from these two days, we've got a rest day, and then we've got a heavy upper body day. And your heavy upper body day is gonna look almost the same as your light upper body day. The difference is really, it's gonna be in your first movement and your second movement. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to choose the same variations for both days, and you shouldn't. So there should be different horizontal rows, different arm isolation movements. You can move things around here. Your day shouldn't be identical. But the, the template for both days is going to be very, very similar. So what's going to change here from our light upper body day to our heavy upper body day? We're going to do something similar to our heavy lower body day. I need to change my words up here. So we've got our max effort upper. Now, the first thing is you're going to have a main movement that you're going to go heavy on. So you're going to do the same thing you did on lower body, which is a three to five rep max, on whatever variation you've chosen there, be it horizontal pressing, vertical pressing, up to you. Then you're going to minus 
25 percent then you're gonna minus another 25 percent so this will be a rep record and this will be a rep record so let's say i benched 205 for three i cut 25 percent off and i was around 150. i hit that for six i cut another 25 percent of my original weight so now i'm down to 50 percent of the weight that i started with and i go for another rep record and then the only other change after that is you're gonna have three to four sets of six to eight reps on your heavy tricep dominant movement. And the reason for that is because you're doing so much more work up here. So those are the changes between those two days. Everything else stays static. Everything else the exact same. Now, with your lower body, because we just hit heavy upper body, we got a rest day. Now we've got our light lower body day. With our light lower body day, I'd say you have two options, but you don't really have two options. If you're new at this, you get one option. So our dynamic effort lower, doing a five by five box squat. This should be challenging to you in the sense that you should feel like you worked, but it should not be anywhere near failure and you should be able to handle that same weight through the five sets of five. So let's say roughly 70 to 75% of what you could box squat for one is around where you want to start doing these. Let's even say 70% at first, and you can change it from there based on how you feel. From there, everything else remains the same, the exact same. Very, very simple. The accessory work on both days, while the variations will be different, they will be different, you have to make them different. The template for both is the same. It's the main work every day that changes things. So the idea with the West Side template, the conjugate method, you've got force production, you've got maximum strength development, and then you've got building out the weak points. So that brings us to a couple important points, and I'm going to write them, and I'm going to write them much bigger. So hopefully you can see them a little bit better, but like I said, there'll be a Google Doc link in the description of this video for you to use um, to fill in your own template as you go. So you might not even be watching this. It might be open on a different screen. Whatever, your call. Now, the movements you pick. Movements. The movements have to be the things you need for the things you want, not just what you want. Want? No. What you need to get what you want. So let me explain. You want a big deadlift. What you might like to do is deadlift. You might be a fan of deadlifts. So you might be a fan, let's say you came from CrossFit. You really like cleans. Like, man, I love cleans. That seems like a lower body movement. Maybe I'll do that. But what you really need for your deadlift is you need a substantially stronger lower back. And you might not like good mornings. You might not like having dead stop good mornings and good mornings against bands and then a deficit deadlift as some of your your main movements in your rotation too bad you have to figure out what you need to get what you want not the movements you just want very 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 important which leads me to the next thing your main movement your main movement is your primary diagnostic tool. It's your PDT. I just made that up, but it sounds really good. When you are doing your main movements, you should be analyzing them afterwards. How did it feel? Where did I fail? Where was I struggling? Because you don't have to fail every time. But where would I have failed if I went for another rep, two more reps, three more reps? What is holding me back? And that will then feed into what do you need? Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use all of your other lifts to tell you the same thing. If you decide, oh, I'm going to do some pec isolation work, and you're at a regular gym and you go to work in, you're like, wow, I'm a 220-pound man, and this 98-pound bikini girl is doing the same weight as I am on these pec flies. Maybe my pecs are really weak. This is probably a problem. You can use any movement in your program to diagnose weaknesses or to start highlighting your weaknesses that then you could go fix. But your main movements, your heaviest movements, the best thing you're going to get out of them is diagnosing your weaknesses. 
That's very, very important. It's going to be your second lift of every day. That is one of your primary, it's going to be your best guess as to what will plug that hole, what will fix that weakness. But you're going to use your main movements especially to diagnose where the weak links are. Do not ever walk away from a heavy day, upper body or lower body, without some thought about what you could learn from that day. Next, switching your movements because you are going to be rotating movements throughout this program. Obviously, on your heavy lifts, so your first lift of the day, first lift of the day, you're going to rotate every two to three weeks. Oh, that could be a two. Pretend that one's a two, and that's a three. Main movement gets rotated every two to three weeks. You're going to hear other things on the internet. You're going to read other things in blogs. If you are new to conjugate, that's what you're doing. So if I picked a deficit deadlift as my heavy lower body movement, I am trying to beat that lift for two to three weeks in a row before I switch it. And do not change your rep record weights. Just try to beat those for the two to three weeks. When you come back to that movement again in your cycle, you can set a new percentage based on what you hit the first time. But for the second and third week of doing the same lift, keep the weights the same. Forget the 25%, whatever it was the first week, that's what you're doing and you're just trying to beat the reps. For your second movement, you're going to rotate that every four weeks. Every four weeks, you're going to make a change to that movement. And we'll talk about what those changes can be in a second, but you're going to rotate that every fourth week. Another acronym here, EO. <laughs> I just say every other. We'll go EE. -E. Everything else is when there is zero progress for two weeks. Then you're going to sub that movement out. That means you might be doing it for a couple months. It means you might be doing it for two weeks. If you're not very good at that exercise, it can't seem to make progress. Or I guess you'll be doing it for at least three. Two weeks in a row of not being able to increase weight or reps by a pound or by a rep on any of your sets. If it is completely static two weeks in a row, then you will change it. Those are the rules for making the substitutions. And the last thing, when it comes to making changes, West Side, part of the reason that people will do a conjugate program or they'll approach West Side is they think that every variation of the movement has to be this new crazy thing. Like last week I was deadlifting, so this week I'm gonna squat while holding a kettlebell in my teeth and I'm gonna put 87,000 pounds of bands on it and I'm gonna use this crazy bar and I'm gonna do something I've never done before. Don't do that. When it comes to rotating your exercises on this schedule, very small rotations work. If you're like, wow, a close grip bench has really been working to build my tricep power, my pressing is working, but I'm, it's been my second lift now for four weeks and I gotta change it. Cool, close grip bench with a pause. Close grip bench with a pause. Change the bar instead of close grip benching on a straight bar, I'm going to close grip bench, but I'm going to use a football bar. So I'm just going to change my hand position. You can make very, very small changes. You could decide to close grip bench press at a Smith machine if you wanted. You could change the type of resistance on the bar. You could add accommodating resistance. You can go from bars to dumbbells or dumbbells to barbells. Add a pause. Make a tiny change in your hand position. With lower body, maybe it's a small change in foot position. It's a pause. It's a box. The changes can be small, and the better you get at figuring out what lifts are working for you, the smaller you want the changes to be. We're trying to avoid completely accommodating to the lifts, but we're not trying to throw away things that are already working for you. So make the changes small. That's it. That is how to build your first conjugate program. I obviously hope this is helpful for you. That's why I made it. If you have questions about how to implement some of this or there are topics you want to see covered in building your program out or where you can take it from here, drop them below in the comments and I will make another video. Good luck. Good luck.